able to utilize data from a data source, within a web page, there are four elements that must work in concert with one another. You must be using a server-side scripting language, a properly formatted data source, the correct connection string, and an SQL query. One without the other yields nothing. So let's explore how all of these elements interact with one another. Previously, I discussed the relationship between some popular scripting language and several of the web creation and management applications data management tools. We also looked at the relationship between some popular data sources and the associated application programming interfaces or APIs used when connecting to them. Now let's look at the relationship between the various data management tools and these same APIs. I'm going to repeat myself here because the DSN and DSN less options for the ODBC driver seem to give people fits. If you are using shared hosting, the cheap one, which most of us are including me, the use of a system DSN connection string is not an option. Dedicated hosting will provide you with everything you get with shared hosting and much more including the ability to use system DSNs, but this type of hosting can be 10 or more times the cost of shared hosting. So, in the shared hosting environment, the available APIs, depending on the scripting language used, are the ODBC driver of the dsn less variety and the OLEDB and ADO.NET providers. Microsoft Front Pages Data Management Tool, or Wizard, automatically creates ODBC dsn less connection strings and utilizes ASP and Front Page extensions when rendering code to a web page. ASP.NET and Microsoft Expression Web's data management tool isn't picky which API you use and can accommodate them all, where the ADO.NET providers have been designed specifically for use with ASP.NET. For standard ASP or VB script and Adobe Dreamweaver's data management tool, the ODBC driver and OLEDB provider are both available. For PHP and a MySQL database using Adobe Dreamweaver's data management tool, the OLEDB provider is used. Without using the data management tool, the OLEDB provider or the MySQL connect function could be used. So let's say I'm using Adobe Dreamweaver's data management tool in the ASP scripting language, and I want to connect to a Microsoft SQL Server database I created at my host and I want to use the OLEDB provider to establish the connection. So, I'll need to look up the OLEDB API for SQL Server and get the path to the database where that path must go after data source equals. For this first look at developing a connection string, I chose to connect to a database on a remote server because this is the most straightforward data source to connect to. The reason this is so easy is, the path to the server is always the same. No matter if you are using your local machine as an application server or testing server, or if any other server is accessing the remote database server, like your web page will, after you upload it to your host web server, the path, or data source equals, is always the same and unlike file-based data sources, will never have to be changed. The OLEDB provider for SQL Server is simply SQL OLEDB. Well, that was easy. And the path to the data source might look something like this. Data source equals some internet path like twimssql.6254.com, an initial catalog, some database name like db4, and some user ID and password like U32 and 1234. And voila, there you have it, a connection string. All of this information was created at and is obtained from wherever the database was initially created. And this connection string would be placed in quotes and set equal to some variable. Let's call this variable connection string and this string is placed in the appropriate file depending on the scripting language being used. 
I have broken this connection string down into three lines of text so I could display it all at one time. But in the code, the connection string will occupy one continuous line of code. Now let's talk about file-based data sources. The problem that must be compensated for with file-based data sources is the path to the data source will be different for each computer or server the file happens to be on. For example, when you were using your local machine as a testing server, the data file, in this case a Microsoft Office Excel .xls file, will be located on your hard drive in the root directory for IIS. And the path to the data file will be something like C colon backslash inetpub backslash www root backslash underscore private backslash and then the file name, in this case products.xls. And when the web page and data file is uploaded to your host server, the path to the data file on the host server might be something like D, some hosting and account folder that forms a root directory, and then some protected folder followed by the products.xls data file. No matter what, the path to the data file will not be the same on your local machine and at your host. This presents a problem because the connection string must contain the correct path to the data source for the machine it is on. This can be remedied by using the server object in the case of ASP, or the real path function for PHP, or the data directory substitution string when scripting with ASP.NET. These methods allow a server to determine the path to the data file without our intervention. Unfortunately, this does not solve all of the problems. The data management tools that can use your local machine as a testing server will only work when the connection string is constructed with the complete path to the data file or constructed using a DSN. At Total Web Info, I show you how to overcome this obstacle so everything runs properly while using a data management tool and your local machine as a testing server, as well as working on a web server like at your host. To wrap up this connection string, I need to add the correct provider for the Microsoft Office Excel.xls file I want to connect to, which is microsoft.jet.oledb.4.0. And because I'm connecting to an Excel file, there are some extended properties that need to be added to complete the connection string. And there you have it, a connection string to a Microsoft Office Excel.xls file using the OLEDB provider. And if I put this connection string in quotes and set it equal to some variable name, again I'll call it connection string, and insert it into the appropriate VB script, it becomes the connection string for the Dinky Dog body page, which is the web page that displays the various categories of products for the Dinky Dog Accessories website. Lastly, I should point out that this all-important connection string resides in different places depending on the scripting language being used. With ASP and PHP, the connection string can reside within the web page that is utilizing the connection string, or it can exclusively occupy its own respective ASP or PHP page. And those pages can be included into many pages, so the data connection can be stored in just one place and used over and over. This is the method Adobe Dreamweaver's data management tool uses when managing connection strings. Microsoft Front Page does things differently, where the connection strings are kept in a file called the global.asa file. ASP.NET and Microsoft Expression Web keep connection strings in the web.config file, and data files must reside in the app data folder. So as you can see, the common theme is, there are many data source API scripting language combinations to arrive at the same result. And TotalWebInfo.com is all about educating you about some of the popular combinations coupled with providing enough information to jumpstart you should you decide to exploit one or more of these methods.